Welcome to Easy Style with Sammy. I'm your host, Sammy Bedell Mulhern. Each episode, I invite a friend, family member, colleague, or just someone I've met on this journey called life to come and share their personal style and approach to business, parenting, life, and everything in between. You'll hear motivational and inspirational stories that will help you refine and build your own personal style. Remember, style is easy when it comes from within. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to Easy Style with Sammy. Today, my guest is Denise Morrison. Denise, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, my friend. So Denise and I met through my cousin, Sarah Mm -hmm. Cook. So you met her and she thought we needed to know each other. And then we've worked together. We've connected to each other. We've collaborated. We've shared contacts and networked and... um, all the things. So um, just one of the things that I love about my business and meeting other people that love connecting like-minded humans together. So thank you for being here. No, it's my pleasure. You're so fun. (laughs) Back at (laughs) you. So we're talking today just about kind of like mindset and life. And I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about kind of like how you marry what you do for a living with how you live your life and all of the things. But before we do that, why don't you kind of let people know a little bit about who Denise is? Well, the fun stuff is that I am a Gemini and <laughs> I live in Norfolk, Virginia, and I'm married to a Kiwi and my son was born in Australia. And that's the more fun stuff. But I am a physical therapist. Gosh, it's been 30 years and I'm also a transformational health and life coach. So talk about marrying my journey and pieces together. So it's, it's, I I found the right pieces at the right time to make me, me and to show up better for my clients. So, yeah. I love that. So (laughs) how did you, well, so how, so I know you focus mostly on coaching women Mm -hmm. and helping them live their best lives. Like, how is that? You just said like, you just found the right pieces at the right time. So how do you think you ultimately landed on working with, um, with women in transforming as opposed to any other demographic that, that could be out there? Well, my heart goes out to them because I was them and I wish I had a me when I was in my 20s and so lost and full of doubt and lacking confidence and beating myself up. So um, the wonderful guides and mentors and coaches that showed up in my life helped me put those pieces together when I was seeking things, Mm. seeking opportunities and avenues to study and grow. So um, and I just my heart goes out to the women that are struggling silently and almost like secretly, and I'm there for them. I, I, I my client calls me her secret weapon. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. But okay, so do you find because this happens to me all the time? I'm not a transformational life coach. I could probably use you in my life right now. But I find it's almost like the chef that cooks all the time in the kitchen, but then doesn't come home and make dinner. Like, what is that like working with? Because you're hearing so many stories of pain and frustration and stress. And then you have your own life that has all of those things as well, because you're a normal person. Um, How do you kind of balance that in your day to day and not let it all kind of bring you down? Oh, my goodness. Well, thankfully, the coaching uh, experience and education and trainings helped me to realize that I'm there to hold space in a loving, caring, curious and non-judgmental way. As opposed to in the healthcare world where I'm meant to diagnose and treat and give advice and kind of like take over where I know from being a coach so long now, it's like, ah, when my clients are having a moment or expressing themselves, I'm just holding that loving space and that's their journey. And so, you know, in the beginning, it was rough. Like I had to learn my own journey, like not to people please and take over and try to fix. I had to let that go. And so now I have my beautiful rituals. I have crystals. I listen to um, music with different frequencies. I go into yoga, nidra poses. Um, so I do some like before and after cleansing routines. So my energy is fresh for them and on them. Yeah. And yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Well, and that's super interesting because I feel like maybe I'm wrong here, but that some of that stuff could be really impactful for all of us, like before and after rituals for 
anything like going into a crazy work meeting or, you know, when you're hitting stressful times, like, are those rituals that you teach people or is it just like, there's like whatever meditation, like people just need to find the things that what pump them up before they go in and then help them come down when they're out. Like, you know, kind of, do you have different styles of rituals for different types of events or, or how do you kind of pull all that together? It depends on the person I'm speaking to. Um, everyone has a different kind of sensory system. Their neurology is different. So, um, someone like me who is born naturally <laughs> like excited and ready to go and beam, I need to calm myself down and come into my center and I do grounding activities. So either way, and then cleansing, releasing ones after I'm finished interacting with people. Um, but yeah, it depends on the person and I would not want you to like jazz up your nervous system when that's not good for you. <laughs> and <vice versa. laughs> so um, after working with children so for so many years, I saw the impact on how the littlest thing can set off a little human being's nervous system. And it's especially important for my clients as well, because we, we, we sometimes lose that innocence and we mm. on too much from the world. Uh, I would agree that we definitely take on too much. Um, so, uh, well, and then the other thing that I wanted to ask you is like, I know that when you work with these women, a lot of times the things that they, like you can see the bigger picture. And a lot of times the things that people come to you with that they're struggling with aren't even like the root cause of what they what we're struggling with. So, I mean, I don't want you to give away every, all of your secrets, but <laughs> like, you know, if, if we're sitting here and we're like, Oh, I'm overeating or I want to lose weight or I'm drinking too much or I'm watching too much TV. I'm not going out and seeing friends. I'm staying home too much, whatever it might be kind of what's maybe one quick thing that we can sit with in the moment to be like, okay, I'm going to start to do the practice of reframing how I'm thinking about this situation. Well, as a beautiful practice is just stopping and sitting and being very still and quiet and staying with that oddness, that uncomfortableness and feeling what's really happening and trusting that you do know what's going on inside of you and if you give yourself the space and the grace and the love to do it compassionately as if you would look towards like a little child or a pet yeah. or something, but to just sit there and go, what's going on now? Like, where's my mind? Where's my body? What are, what are my behaviors? And start to pay attention in a curious way, not in a, in a judgy mean girl way, but a, a nice way and notice like what's, what's going on. Do I feel mm -hmm. good actually or not? <laughs> well, and um, yes, I like that you said sit in the uncomfortableness. <laughs> yeah. But that's the hardest thing to do. It's like we're trying to do, I mean, like, oh, anyway, I'll work on that. Uh, clearly, that's something I, you just triggered me a little bit, maybe. So I awesome. To... <laughs> powerful. Powerful. <laughs> uh, no, I, because um, I think like we're, especially the fact that you work with women. Um, I know there's days where I'm like, okay, I've, you know, like today I just recorded two podcast episodes back to back. I had a coaching call this morning. Um, I have to take my son to the dentist this afternoon. Like I know at the end of today, I'm going to be like tapped out, but still feel like super guilty to say, Hey honey, I need you to like take control and take all the decisions. Like, you know, there's the, I think there's those balances that we need to find in ourselves. So do you find that, um, most people are coming to you really like struggling with balance or are they struggling with their voice or like, how can we start to really identify what that trigger is for us so we can kind of work deeper into that? Well, what the, I like to use the word harmony instead of balance because we're forever like falling right. off. Balance. Cause balance is e like has to be seems equal, right? Right. And, and does a seesaw ever stay totally balanced? I mean, and even as a physical therapist, like the act of walking, you're perpetually catching yourself from falling. And so that's the definition of like a gait cycle. It's like we're forever fighting against gravity. So uh -huh. as we ease into it and we go, OK, what's up here? And truly tuning in like in a simple way to me, but 
re-educating my women going, are you breathing? <laughs> Where are your muscles? Are your, your shoulders up to your ears? Mm-hmm. You know, are your feet on the ground? Where Where's your thoughts right now? Um, what What's your body saying to you? Like, are you even feeling good? Do you have any energy? And those little self-care, self-within checks. And, and that's your best way because you're inside you. Nobody knows that. And, and then if you have a, a supportive family, spouse, whatever, to communicate with them and say, you know, this is my day. I need you for X and that's okay. And as long as everybody is on board, you know, with how you mm-hmm. have to do you, then you're, you're all set. It's all good. So it's usually those little stinky judgments that throw us off track when they're not, I mean, maybe this is your process. This is how you roll and it's okay. And in your family, whatever works and being okay mm-hmm. with that. Uh, yeah. Well, so it's almost like saying like really pay attention to the inner movements in your body and like knowing what you feel as opposed to absorbing what's happening in your exterior space. Whatever. I don't that's not the right word, but uh, Oh, for sure. No, but it is. Like like a lot of times my clients they're so outwardly focused on pleasing everybody or doing the thing or showing up in a certain way that they're so drained by outside, they feel really uncomfortable going, wait a minute, I've been doing this for 30 years or 10 years. I don't like feeling so empty inside. And Mm -hmm. yes, it's hard because there's a bit of acknowledgement that you are doing this to yourself, but it's also an opportunity to go, I can change this because I recognized it. Yeah. That recognition piece is critical, right? Oh my gosh. And I mean, I, something just happened to me before. Of course, it's always like in the shower and I'm like, oh, dang. Okay. Ha ha. I see what you're doing again. <laughs> and then course correct in a loving way and make new decisions. <laughs> yep. Well, and you meant, so you mentioned earlier that you are a PT. You were a PT first, right? Yes. I've been a physical therapist. I started when I was in high school volunteering in PT because I just thought it was so fun. Yeah. So <laughs> And then you mentioned like the things just kind of showed up to you in time. So do you feel like you did like you did this work that you're doing with your clients? Like you did this work yourself and that's what led you to want to coach other people. I know you kind of alluded to that before, but did you go through the same process personally that you are now coaching on? And, and is it something that you have to continually like, is it like maintenance on a car? Like you're continually checking in with yourself <laughs> Or is it like once you get to being a guru like yourself, you're like, okay, I got this. Like I can tackle anything. Ha. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I know the answer to that question, but I'm asking it anyway. <laughs> well, you know, what's really funny is along the way I became a yoga instructor because I was so enamored by the yogis that they just seemed to be like floating all around and so happy. And then <laughs> once, once I realized like the world of yoga has human beings teaching it and there's issues. So it's like... When you when I arrived within my own self, loving and caring for my own self, that was my little moment of stopping in, in alignment. But um, yeah, all of the things that I have found and, and pieced together, what, what I was seeking to help me, I, I now offer that for my women. And yes, I need my own maintenance procedures for sure. My <laughs> own maintenance practice, practices, so to speak. Um, otherwise, I can't show up and be me. And then I'm, I love learning and I love like, if there's a a situation with a client that I've never heard of, I'll go research it and find out because I want to be able to be there to support them wholeheartedly, you know? Yeah. Um, I think that's good. And I think it's also good just to remember for all of us that it is a journey. Mm -hmm. There's no real in destination because I think that helps us think, okay, like I just want to do a little bit better today than I did yesterday. Right. Like, do you think that kind of reduces some of that overwhelm of like, I'm going to fix this whole thing and I'm going to have this life and I'm going to like, this is what I'm going to be. And it's going to be amazing. Like that goal is almost makes it harder to, to do the work. And just saying like fixing oneself, Mm. no one's broken. No one's broken. So when you can go, this is a little tweak, a little unraveling, a new opportunity for me. So when I talk to my clients about getting triggered, I welcome those triggers because then we could say, okay, what's the experience that you're having because of that trigger? What pieces of you can we kind of like take a look at and then maybe learn from and let go of and build up other pieces so that 
you've like gone, okay, I saw the trigger. I learned from that. I'm going to do this differently. So it's, it's a beautiful, like neurological choreo, choreo, choreography within oneself. And that's the coolest bit because there's so much power when you can trust and love yourself and what you can do. So, well, this has me thinking now my brain is going because my word for this year or my, my vision for myself for this year was to do what feels good without expectation. Nice. So I wanted to let go of expectation and just know that the work that I'm doing, the clients that I'm serving, the choices that I'm making in my business are because I know it's what's going to get me to that next step. And that whatever the expectation is, is gone. Whatever happens, happens. And we'll, we'll see how that goes. But, um, because I feel like sometimes, just like you said, if we have these triggers, we have these emotions, we have these feelings, these thoughts, whatever, we see the picture of where we're going. But if we kind of let go of that picture and just work on improving ourselves, sometimes we end up somewhere we were, where we don't imagine. Yes. Is that what you kind of see? Oh, gosh, yes. And, and I, I believe um, the words are now being t- called goal drama and goal trauma. Because for some reason, like whatever may be, like we've set a goal in our mind, but then our bodies might not be aligned with that. We might think, oh, I don't want to do that. I, someone told me I have to do that. Or that's what they said. But inside of you, you're going, I don't want that at all. And typically, like the goal will not be met because your whole being is going, actually, I'd rather go this way. And mm. it's so very subtle and so very quiet. And all of a sudden, you've found yourself in a new, brighter path that brought amazing people and opportunities. And you're like, oh, so yeah, having a nice vision. And as you've heard me say before, like have the vision of it, have the um, feelings around it, have the sensations in all its pieces, the smells, the tastes, whatever. And that will, I think, be a much richer experience day in and day out than just that little smart goal on the piece of paper. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we're well, right. I mean, like, there's point, there's value to all things. Yes. But I think when you're looking at big picture, who am I, where am I going to be? Yeah, uh, I agree uh, with. Yeah, I love that. And do you think you would be where you are now with your coaching business if you had set that as like, this is my goal? Like, I know you've had very specific goals towards what you want mm-hmm. your business to be. But do you think you would have gotten here if you had a specific expectation? <laughs> No, I mean, it's, and then that's the thing is I'm going, what part of me was striving for that? And now looking back, I'm like, most of those like aiming for big goals in different ways were put in into me by somebody else, somebody else's ideas, somebody else's expectations, old news inside my head. And I'm like, wait a minute, I don't even want that. And the flow and the feeling of like ease and joy that comes from like, like having a, a great feeling instead of that harshness, that struggle, yeah. that resistance, and that like beating myself up daily. That's the worst. Like, I, know, I did it for years and now I'm like, nope, we're just kind of flowing and going here and it's manifesting in its own way and it feels so much better. Yeah, I love that. That So this is your permission, listeners, to <laughs> look within, listen to yourself, and make the right choice based off of what you want, not what you think you want. Oh. And we've had I've had so many conversations with people, um, especially women entrepreneurs in the last few months, just about that with everything, with how you approach the way you do your work, um, how you structure your day, how you structure your life, and just giving yourself permission to, to do it your way. And I... Um, kind of the last thing I want to get your, your take on is the thing that I think is hurting us the most in society is this need to compare everything. My trauma is worse than your trauma. My rules are better than your rules. My way of parenting is better than your way of parenting and having this like duality that just, we feel like we can say what we think without any care for how it affects other people. And so is that something you're also seeing in and kind of needing to unwind in people? If they're willing to let go of that pattern that they have and the need to do that, and there's usually an underlying need or reason that they keep that up. And typically I, my clients soon realize that those people are probably not their people and yeah. they find a different direction to go in because it feels yucky when they, mm-hmm. when they're in that space and place. And 
I mean, I, I jokingly say, you know, to my son, like, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Like, <laughs> instead of saying that or acting yeah. that way, like pipe down and figure out the effects of what you're going to say and the face that you're going to have on when you show up, show up at work. Like, you yeah. know, like take responsibility for how you're presenting yourself in the world. Otherwise, you're going to get fed back to you the crap that you're putting out. That's for sure. <laughs> Well, and then the reverse is true, right? Like feeling like, well, I didn't experience as much trauma as somebody else. So therefore I'm not as deserving of the work or effort, right? Like it goes the other way. Right. I mean, like, what's the competition for? Like yeah. what's the struggle for? And, and, you know, I, I like, you know, tell my clients and, and of course with my son, I'm like, your, your, your way, your, your voice, your messaging is so unique. Just show up and be you. And if they're not appreciating, mm -hmm. they don't appreciate that. Uh, ban, block, delete, whatever you got to do to get that noise out of your life, because you can find yeah. your people, you find your tribe, you know? Well, and I'm going to call Denise out a little bit. She doesn't know this, but when we were first <laughs> working together, she said, well, I need to show up like this on this platform and I need to show up like this on this platform. So um, it makes me smile to hear you say that because I know you've worked a lot on that over the last couple of years because um, that's a scary thing, showing up as a coach um, yeah. online as yourself. Yeah. Um, and so it's fun to just see that whole evolution continue to happen uh, to happen for you. Cause yeah, we're all a work in progress. Oh gosh. Yeah. And that's the thing is like I, when social media, you know, here's my age here. Like when social media came out, I had no idea that it was like, you were standing out there naked in the <laughs> world. <laughs> and like everybody's looking at you and judging you. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not sure about this. And now, yeah. now I'm like, Hey, my message is going out to the ones that need it the most. And if you don't like it, yeah. bye, switch off. <laughs> so. See you later. I love that. I love that. Easier said than done, especially, you know, we can think that way and then we get that one message and you're like, Rrr. but it's work, it's, work, it's work in progress. Okay. We're going to wrap this up with the five questions that I ask everybody Ooh. on this podcast. So where do you go for information, for learning, for personal development? I know this is a biggie for you, so I'm excited to hear your answer. Well, I am a big fan of Abraham Hicks and... That's on YouTube and it's keeps me grounded to like the universe, spirituality and my beingness. I go back and hang out with my coach tribes where I've had my trainings and still watch their videos and listen to their podcasts and stuff because it brings me back to home and where I've been. Cause sometimes along the way I can forget as you, as we all do, like, mm -hmm who the heck am I today? And yeah. so I have them nearby and I just feel that the people that I speak to and network with, they share things with me in just the right moment and get the books or whatever. Yep. Yeah. That mm -hmm. has also been a common theme on this podcast. It's really, this has been so fun for me because oh. all these different people and I hear these common threads and that's one to like, you know, just put out in the universe what it is that you need and all of a sudden the resources will just show up for you wherever, wherever you are. So I think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Okay. Would you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? Introvert. Yeah. But just I can, an introvert. Well, I could put the smile on and do the dance <laughs> with social media. But I, like if I, if I'm on social media, it takes me like an hour to calm down afterwards. <laughs> I feel you there. I feel you there. Um, what is one thing that's on your goal list for this year, either personal or professional? Ooh, I am going to be, become a trauma informed certified coach over the summer. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. Uh, the level of healing that I'm ready to do. Yes. <laughs> Good for you. That's incredible. That's, Thank and you. would that, would you be able to do that work virtually as well? Or would that be more in person? It's, it'll be a bit of both, but uh, I mean, mostly we can do so many things through zoom now. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of like real life. <laughs> yeah, it is. it is our new real life. That is true. Ugh, what is one piece of advice you've gotten from someone that has stuck with you? <sighs> Only speak when it's an improvement on silence. You know, that is a lesson I've had to learn is the pause, like embrace the pause. Um, cause you're right. We fill our talk because we are uncomfortable with silence. Yeah. And like I was saying before, what are you, why are you putting out what you're putting out of your mouth and body and 
Do you realize the consequences of what you're going to put out and if it's helpful or hurtful? Well, was that a hard lesson for you to learn too when you first started coaching? Not the hurtful stuff, but like when you're working with somebody, allowing that pause to happen and the silence to happen and not feel the need to, like you said at the beginning, it was hard for you to not just be a fixer and a problem solver. Oh yeah. Cause I thought coaches were crazy people. I'm like, wait a minute. I was trained in the land of healthcare where yeah. I, have to, <laughs> I have to tell everybody all the things. And I'm like, wait, I don't have to do this. My clients know all the things. I'm just yeah. there to help them get it out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so hard. It's so hard. Listening and then waiting for a response and just letting the response be is it's a life, life lesson I'm working on. <laughs> um, what is a non-negotiable in your life? Laughing. You do it a lot. I love that about you. Well, it just brings me like, I am just, I, I know I was like put on this planet to be pure joy and ease and it just helps me like spread it, you know? Like, yeah. Well, and Denise, well, Denise will share all her social links here in a little bit, but if you're not following her on Facebook to watch her reels, like she does <laughs> like, and the things you rope your husband into, I'm just like, my husband would never, it's amazing. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> Yeah, he's so, on TikTok and he has no idea because he's not on there. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah. So good. Okay, well, Denise, thank you so much for sharing your insights, your thoughts, your perspective. I think it's so important for all of us um, to really think about how we want to show up and mm -hmm. then doing the work to show up that way and feel good about it. So I appreciate everything you're doing um, in this space. Um, if people want to connect with you more, check out all your stuff, how do they do that? I would say go to my website, denislynnmorrison.com. Very simple. And I'm on all the platforms, <laughs> hanging out. If you see my face, this is me. There's a lot of Denise <laughs> Morrison, so I'm the kooky one. <laughs> The kooky one. Oh my goodness. Well, and we'll link all of her links and the resources that you shared in the show notes at easystylewithsammy.com slash 16. Um, well, Denise, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. You're so fun. <laughs> Big, big thank you to Denise for coming and being on the podcast today and for shedding light on how we can show up, be the best versions of ourselves, and allow ourselves to just be who we are. I think it is such a hard lesson for us and something that I'm trying to instill in my daughter to just be herself and my son. But how can we show up and be authentic and be real? Easier said than done, especially the older we get. But I just love Denise's energy and the way that she supports people in living their best lives. So I hope you'll check out her resources. You can find them all at easystylewithsammy.com slash 16. Make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to these episodes so you don't miss out on a single one. They all go live on Thursday. So we have a new episode every week. And we also have a new blog post that goes along with these episodes on Tuesdays. So if you want to dive deeper into a particular topic, you can check that out at easystylewithsammy.com slash blog. For now, have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you in the next one.